Hi, this is a demonstration to show you how to use the Debian Live DVD or CD and use that to create an removable drive, a removable drive that is also bootable. Um, so we'll go ahead and um, demonstrate that today. Uh, right now you are seeing uh, a virtual machine. In the virtual machine, the first drive is a 20 gig hard drive, and that's basically just pretending to be an internal hard drive to um, the computer, because most computers do have at least one internal hard drive. Um, the second drive is a four gigabyte hard drive, a four gigabyte uh, mass store device, and that's well, that can be your SD card, it can be a compact flash card, uh, it can be a four gigabyte um, thumb drive. The third drive is a DVD uh, CD drive, and that's the one that I'm pretending that has the uh, CD, the live CD or the live DVD installed or put into it. So we'll go ahead and boot with the third option, which is um, the live DVD or live CD. And when you start up, you will see the screen, uh, which allows you to select one of these options. What we'll do is we'll select the second option because we in for this particular example we do not need or want um, to have a persistent partition so we'll start the second option press the enter key and this will start right up the reason why you don't want to use a uh, live CD and instead use a uh, flash card or a CD ROM um, excuse me or an SD card um, for the uh, live image is because that's a whole lot faster. Um, a CD drive has a lot of mechanical components and as a result you know it loads up pretty slowly. If you put the same image on an SD card, assuming the SD card is class 6 or better, uh, it will give you a tremendous uh, performance boost. So that's why um, I recommend people not to use a CD-ROM or a DVD for the live image and instead um, use a removable drive instead. Alright, so we are now in um, the live image or we are starting the uh, live operating system. So once again we log in as regular user and the password of user is user. Remember this time we are not using the pers uh, persistent partition so even if you had changed the password it will still be the default which is USER as the password. And the system is starting right up. And we'll go ahead and use the default configuration. And now we are ready. So what we want to do is we'll go ahead and start up a command prompt first and we'll run this command called mount because we want to see what kind of devices are available and what kind of devices are already in use. The one thing that we want to look for is um, the live cow mount point and right now it is mounted to tempfs which is a RAM disk so that means we're not we're definitely not using a persistent partition and you want to go through this list here and make sure that um, the device that we want to burn the live image onto is not being mounted at this point because you know the worst thing that can happen is you're overwriting a device that is actually being that is already mounted because you'll lose massive data for one thing and then two the system will get very confused so everything looks good right now um, so we'll go ahead and do it oh that's the other thing that is also important is to find out where live image is mounted to or it is where it's mounted from it is actually mounted from our CD-ROM drive which has a name of SR0 alright so everything is in place we're ready to go and we'll go ahead and change to our root user first remember the root user has a default password of ball B-A-L-L -L. and now we are uh, we have elevated privileges uh, to the system and to make the image to or to copy the image from the CD-ROM drive to an SD card or some other device like that is a single command in Linux so that's really really easy the command is called dd 
And with DD, you have to specify the input file, which is IF. In this case, the input file is our CD-ROM drive. And you can note, you can see that I'm not using SR0. Instead, I'm using CD-ROM. CD-ROM is just a symbolic link to SR0, but it is definitely a lot easier to remember because we all know what a CD-ROM drive is. The output file, now this part is very, very important, is SDB. This is the 4 gig drive that we have seen a little bit earlier. Now this part is extremely important because if you specify the wrong drive, you can overwrite the internal hard drive and basically lose massive amount of data if you're not careful. So you definitely want to make sure that this is, in fact, the drive that you want to overwrite. The third option is optional, but you want to um, include that too, is the block size. Because if you don't specify the block size, um, the default block size is 512 bytes, which basically means your know, DD will try to copy 512 bytes at a time from the CD-ROM device to SDB. That will take a long time, because most flash devices work better when the block size is at least 4 kilobytes. And that's why we want to change it to at least 4K. Um, you can turn it, uh, crank it up to 8K. I think that will work just fine too. Uh, but I think 4K is a minimum to uh, get the most out of your um, high-speed flash device. So we'll go ahead and press the Enter key. And that will start the copying. It's completely silent. It doesn't give you any feedback. Um, it will just be done when it comes back. Now remember, we are not overwriting a single partition. In this case, we are actually overwriting the entire drive. SDB is designates an entire drive, not a partition on the drive. You can, if you want to, use only one partition um, for the live image, um, but it's difficult. And every time you want to change the image, you will have to go through the whole process again. And that's why I just I recommend the use of a smaller flash card just to hold the live image. The other advantage of using a flash device instead of a CD-ROM is um, the flash device is, is writable. If you want to upgrade the Linux um, live image, you can just overwrite it. And now you have a new image. There's nothing to toss away, so it's less wasteful. And we are all done. Now this is really fast. You know, having a uh, copy bandwidth of 26.2 megabytes per second is really, really fast. Uh, typically, you don't get that speed even if you have a class 4 or class 6 SD card. Um, it's fast because it, we are running from a virtual machine. So we are not really copying from a CD-ROM. It's really just copying from my uh, uh, file system, which is a hardware RAID 5 system. So it's reasonably flat fast in this case. So we're all done. We really are all done at this point. And we'll go ahead and restart the system. But this time when we restart the system, we want to restart with SDB just to make sure that we copy the image correctly, correctly and that device is bootable. So we'll go ahead and go to Applications menu and go all the way to logout and specify restart. And I think this method beats, beats uh, trying to download um, DD for Windows and then try to uh, do it in Windows. Because in Windows, if you want to designate a particular um, drive, you have to find out you know some really obscure, long, internal um, uh, designation for the drive, uh, whereas in Linux, you know, it's you know, fairly easy to tell which drive we are talking about. All right, so we are now back to um, the startup screen. Remember, the first one is still our internal hard drive, or pretend to be our internal hard drive, so when we don't want to boot with that. You can if you want to, if you have Windows already installed on the machine and you want to reboot back into Windows, go ahead and start with the internal hard drive. Um, the second one is what we want, uh, what we want to use this time because supposedly it has the Linux Live image now, 
And this is an interesting uh, live image. It can work from a CD-ROM. It can also work from an SD card. So it's that's why it's called a hybrid um, binary image. So we'll go ahead and specify two this time. So I'm just I just click two, and you can see we are seeing exactly the same screen because you know it works. Um, this time we can uh, go with persistent or non-persistent. It doesn't matter because we don't really have a uh, persistent partition, so the system will just waste time looking for it, but it won't find it. But what we do want to do is to you know start it up and make sure that um, the system does start up correctly. And um, I can show you that you can see you can confirm that it is actually booting from the external mass store device or removable mass store device instead of the CD-ROM. Uh, right now it's just wasting time looking for the um, um, live uh, persistent, parti uh, persistent partition and the rest should be about the same or exactly the same as last time. There we go, we have the GUI up and running. Alright, so we log in as regular user and the password is just user. Alright, so the system is once again up and running. And the question is, you know, well, do we know that we are starting from um, the flash card or the, you know, pretend SD card instead of the CD-ROM? That's the question, right? So we want to go start up a terminal emulator and type mount. Um, this time we focus on exactly the same thing as last time. The first thing is, where is the image mounted from? Oh, it is mounted from SDB1. Remember, SDB is our pretend SD card. So, in fact, you know, we are running the system from the SD card this time. And that's why it's going to be a whole lot faster because there's no moving mechanism from the SD card. So, now that we have talked about how to create a persistent partition and also how to um, make an SD card um, to have the system image, the question now is. So what is the best combination? I mean, do I have to pick one or the other, or is there a way to use both of these things? And the answer is, well, we can do both. So we'll go ahead and start up um, the browser, and you can see that you know in the live image you have um, a choice of at least two browsers. We have uh, Epiphany, uh, which is basically um, it has a Firefox engine or the Gecko engine, um, so it shares a lot of common traits with uh, Ice Weasel, which is basically Firefox. But we also have uh, Google Chrome if you prefer uh, Google Chrome. This is always uh, up to date as far as uh, um, the date of it's always up to date uh, relative to uh, when this um, live image is created. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just you know go shopping a little bit here. All right, so this is one you know place that's easy to review um, feedback from other customers and so on. So you know it's a it's a good place to do research at least. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, take a look at um, SD cards. Okay, so we'll look at you know SD, and you really don't need anything more than you know four gigabytes for um, the live image. So I would just say you know four gigabytes is more than enough, and you, you do want a higher speed one. So class six is good, you know, but class ten is better. And if the price difference is not that much, you know, why not go for a faster one? Um, and you can see that you know a four a four gigabyte SD card, um, class ten, is only about eight bucks. So you know that's a that's a pretty good deal. I mean you know it's 
you know it's not dirt cheap uh, but it does give you a, a, a big performance boost in terms of uh, comparing to a CD-ROM um, and it's a lot smaller too it's a whole lot smaller than a CD-ROM so that's one and we want to use this you know just to store um, the live image um, when it is time for me to upgrade the live image either to update the software or to include additional software all you have to do is to go through the procedure that we just talked about and you can use exactly the same device again and again or the same flash card again and again now so the second question is um, this is only going to store the system image so for the most part when the system is up and running this is a read-only file system it, you're not going to overwrite anything so if you want to save something you're not going to save it to this particular device to save anything you need at least a 16 gig hard drive for the class so this is not going to do it now I do know that there are uh, 16 gig SD cards but since your multi-slot media reader most likely only has one single SD card slot we want to pick something that is different from an SD card in order so that so that you can only you can put in an SD card and also another flash device at the same time in a multi-slot um, flash reader so this way you know everything is solid state it's fast and easy to carry you know and you get good performance out of it so what we'll do is we'll take a look at uh, compact flash cards because that's the second most common uh, format for flash drives or for flash uh, memory devices so compact flash and we want to target something that's at least you know 16 gigabytes large and you can already see that there are some insanely fast um, devices here like 600x and 400x now 400x is really cool um, but you can see the price is quite expensive it's n probably not worth it and here's another 400x you know it's still kind of expensive you know 30 something bucks for you know 16 gigs is still kind of expensive and we have this one here 133x is a little bit slower you know and mm, you can give it a try you know it's it's going to be okay but I don't think it's going to be like top-notch in terms of uh, performance so basically you can just keep looking and you'll know, find out what device is good um, and one thing you can do is to just you know, go through some math here and find out you know whether you know at which point the speed is no longer relevant so we'll click on this item and see whether it gives us some you know actual read write speed and uh, right here now look at this number here uh, is with its ultra fast transfer rates of 45 megabytes per second now stop and think about it how fast is USB 2 USB 2 is only capable of up to 480 megabits per second now with overhead that really roughly translates to about 40 you know 42 megabytes per second in other words this um, compact flash card with a 266 a X um, speed is going to outpace it's going to be faster than your USB bus can handle and remember your USB bus is also shared with the SD card and some other devices too so this is already you know faster than what you need so if you can find something that is of the speed of say 233x and it is significantly cheaper that's a better deal so let's look for that too so at this point you know it's that we're just you know uh, wasting time you know shopping for something but it doesn't hurt to take a look well they do have devices of that speed but it's not exactly a good deal mm -hmm. I was expecting price to drop a bit more at this time but apparently 16 gig um, compact flash cards are still expensive we have a 133x here that is quite a bit less expensive um, it will still do a really you know, reasonable job 
So this will cost you about you know somewhere between twenty to thirty bucks uh, for the flash card that will store that will act as the persistent partition. And I'm just gonna take a look at this one and see what is the sustained transfer rate and see whether okay right there the sustained transfer rate is twenty one point five megabytes per second. Um, well, it's the maximum. You know, it's not. Um, they don't say that this is the sustained rate. Um, but this is probably more than sufficient already, um, because you know, even with the IDE drive, external hard drive, uh, you don't really, you cannot expect to sustain this kind of transfer rate anyway. Um, so this is already good enough. You know, 133x is already quite fast uh, for our needs. And this is about 22 bucks. You add. Eight bucks to it, you know, that's a total of a little more than thirty dollars in terms of uh, flash cards that you have to purchase in order to um, make it make it work. And here are some uh, notes from end use other end users in terms of a uh, read write speed. And apparently, it's not quite as fast as uh, what people claim it is, or what the manufacturer claim it is. Um, the the, the access speed is actually quite slow compared to uh, what the advertisement says. You know, the access speed is only about 26x uh, and not to 133x. So, you know, just read the f uh, feedback carefully when you are, you know, shopping for one and um, have good uh, good luck with it. All right. Well, this uh, really concludes our little demonstration here, and I'll just you know properly shut down everything. This is the other thing is you know you don't want to just un turn off the computer or just keep uh, or just unplug the devices. It's always better to you know uh, use a proper shutdown um, to shut down your system because otherwise you can lose data um, left and right if you just you know unplug the the uh, removable drives. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I look forward to um, talking to you again in my next video clip.